Woolly Mammoth versus African Elephant. The Woolly Mammoth and the African Elephant are part of the same family, but are separated by just a few thousand years. The last mammoths known to exist are thought to have died out around 4,000 years ago, with most of them being claimed by the end of the last ice age about 10,000 years ago. Mammoths can be seen then as the not-so-distant cousins of African elephants that we're familiar with today, just a hairier version with smaller ears and more prominent tusks. Apart from those, the differences aren't that vast, but let's take a closer look at these family members and get into the detail of each of these fierce creatures before pitting them against each other and revealing who might win in a fight. Let's start with the woolly mammoth. These mammoths roamed parts of Earth's northern hemisphere for at least half a million years. In the grand scheme of the Earth's existence, they didn't exist that long ago. Populations were still very prevalent 20,000 years ago, but they were reduced to isolated populations off the coasts of Siberia and Alaska within 10,000 years. But how did our furry friend get its name? Well, the woolly part is pretty self-explanatory, as the creature was covered in thick wool-like hair that kept it warm in the harsh climates of the Arctic. The word mammoth has its origins from the Russian word mammoth, which refers to mammoth bones found in Siberia. This word developed into English in the 18th century as an interest in the giant bee started to increase with more discoveries of the perfectly preserved creatures. So what are the vital statistics of this magnificent creature? Woolly mammoths had long, black, shaggy fur and two huge curving tusks. These tusks were used to protect themselves against creatures like the saber-toothed tiger and explore their snow-covered landscape for grass and other food. Like a tree, a cross-section of a tusk shows growth rings that can be used to work out the animal's age. Paleontologists have also found that the inner surface of one tusk can be more worn than the other. It's been thought that this would mean mammoths were right-tusked or left-tusked. These tusks could reach a length of 13 feet and contribute to a massive proportion of the current controversial Chinese ivory trade. Nearly 90% of mammoth ivory exported from Siberia, around 60 tons a year, finds a home in China. On average, woolly mammoths were about 11 and a half feet long, 9 and a half feet tall at the shoulder, and weighed up to about 6 metric tons. The ears of a woolly mammoth were shorter than the modern elephant's ears. Like their thick fur coats, their shortened ears were a necessary cold weather adaptation because it minimized frostbite and heat loss. This is why their tails were shorter as well, and it made them less likely to freeze in the harsh climate. We know all this because of discoveries since the first woolly mammoth skeleton was discovered in 1799. It was brought to the Zoological Institute of the Russian Academy of Science in the early 19th century, where naturalist Wilhelm Gottlieb Tilesius put it all together. Because of its close resemblance, he based his puzzle piecing in an Indian elephant skeleton. He almost got the thing correct on the first go, but the only thing he missed was the tusk's orientation. He had them in their sockets the wrong way round, and their tusks ended up curving outward instead of inward. Since then, we've made plenty more discoveries. The advantage of the mammoths having been native to places like Siberia is that they were preserved in ice for thousands of years. This means that when the discovery has been made, the mammoth was almost perfectly preserved as it was when it died, including their trademark fur. The last of the woolly mammoths found themselves stranded on a remote island of Siberia due to rising sea levels at the end of the last ice age about 4,000 years ago before the whole population became extinct. These dwarf woolly mammoths lived on Siberia's Wrangel Island until their death. It's been discovered that this small community had many genetic problems. They carried poor DNA with increased diabetes risk, developmental defects, and low sperm count. If mammoths were alive today, you wouldn't have to be too worried about them. They were herbivores, so they had no interest in eating humans. Specifically, they grazed the land to eat grass, grass that they would find by shifting the snow found on the surface of their habitats. We know this by studying the structure of the mammoth's teeth. The molars are structured in such a way that it reveals their method of eating. They chewed by placing grass between upper and lower molars and moved their lower jaw forward while dropping it, as well as moving it backward and repeating the process. Putting all this together created a grinding motion perfect for gobbling down grass. 
The African elephant is not too far away from the woolly mammoth. In particular, their sizes are very similar, which we'll get into in more detail later. The African elephant is the largest land animal on the planet, and it's slightly larger than its Asian counterparts. Their ears are a bit larger and look a bit like the continent they live on. Their Asian cousins have more rounded ears. In contrast to the woolly mammoth, these giant creatures need to keep themselves cool rather than avoid the cold. This is why African elephant's ears radiate heat to help keep these giant animals cool. We mentioned before that the African elephant's size was very similar to the mammoths we've already looked at. This is true. The average African full-grown male elephant is between 8.2 and 13 feet from shoulder to toe and weighs between 2 and 6 metric tons. Male elephants are capable of growing significantly larger than females, but some females are also able to reach heights over 9 feet. This means that overall the mammoth and African elephant size range is more or less the same. You'd have to be looking at specific animals to get any difference between them. Apart from the ears, the most obvious physical difference between mammoths and elephants are their tusks. Mammoth tusks were typically longer in proportion to body size and had more curvature than elephant tusks. Woolly mammoth tusks tended to be around 10 to 13 feet. The record length tusk for the African elephant was 11 feet 7 inches long, but on average their tusks are more like 6 feet. We mentioned earlier that the ivory from mammoths was still a part of the current trade. Another difference between the two creatures we're looking at here is that mammoth ivory is legal. In contrast, elephant ivory isn't because it encourages the killing of live elephants as opposed to their already extinct woolly equivalents. Its name obviously reveals the African elephant's habitat. They range throughout the savannas of sub-Saharan Africa and the rainforests of Central and West Africa. The northernmost African elephants can be found in the Sahel area of Mali. They prefer to live in the rainforests, but most are found in savannas. This is due to the fact that these extensive plains cover almost half of Africa's total surface. Some African elephants can be found in the desert and mountains. Amazingly, these elephants will travel up to 60 miles in one day for food and water. They're able to do this because they can go long periods without water and have the ability to drink 45 gallons or more per day. They eat roots, grasses, fruit, and bark, just like its huge water consumption, an adult elephant can take in up to 300 pounds of food in only one day. Food is mainly on these animals' minds, and because they sometimes travel so far to get it, they don't tend to sleep a lot. If we look at the similarities between these two magnificent creatures, we can see they are both huge. Their sheer size and weight mean that they are able to, or were able to, intimidate any other creature they found on their travels. As we've already mentioned, the African elephant is unmatched as far as land-dwelling creatures are concerned for size. The woolly mammoth had a bit more competition, with some even living as far back as the dinosaur era. However, despite this, they were still powerful beasts and you wouldn't want to be under the feet of one of them. Both have a huge physical advantage in strength and power, with little to choose between them. What they have, however, in sheer bulk, they lack in speed. In comparison to us, elephants cannot run but their fast walk can reach speeds of 25 miles per hour. For comparison, Usain Bolt reached around 27 miles per hour at his fastest, comparing it to speed demons in the animal kingdom like cheetahs that can reach 70 miles per hour, you can see why both the African elephant and woolly mammoth might be considered slow. These are their similarities, but what about the differences? The tusks are the key part here, and the mammoth's long-ranging tusks are about double that of the African elephant and would give it a significant advantage if they were to face off. As there's not that much to choose between them in terms of size, weight, and anatomy, the chances are that this difference in tusk would be the fight decider. Like a boxer with a similar physique but longer reach, the mammoth would be able to inflict damage from a further distance, so the elephant wouldn't be able to get close enough to do much to the mammoth. Of course, there's another factor to bear in mind here, and that's the location. Each animal is well suited to its climate. Put a woolly mammoth in Africa and it'll likely overheat in minutes, especially during a fight. Its two-layer coat and small ears cannot cool it down, so that would almost certainly be its downfall even before it got to a fight. If you placed an African elephant in the tundra, well, then you can expect to see its ears and other parts get almost instant frostbite. Its lack of insulation as well would likely see it perish from the cold 
before it got anywhere near the mammoth. But assuming we could find a neutral place for this challenge, we would have to give the mammoth the edge to win this particular battle because of its extended reach. So that'd be one giant fight. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and click on the subscribe bell so we can make more of them. Thanks for watching.